MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. A joy to be in God's house this morning. Please join with me in the call to... of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. A joy to be in God's house this morning. Please join with me in the call to worship, a leader, and people response. God's new realm is beneath our feet. We live in the new creation shaped by God out of our brokenness. Do you know it? God's reconciling love in Christ has shattered our ways of viewing people. No longer do we label our sisters and brothers. We welcome them with open arms. Do you believe it? God has made everything, including us, new and sends us forth to share this good news with everyone. Then let's share that good news with one another this morning as we rise in body and spirit for our opening hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Let's see. 
And so we get the opportunity this morning to tell the old, old story and to make it new, to make it fresh, to make it real for each and every one of us as we tell our stories of God's grace and God's liberation. And so may the Holy Spirit bless us this morning as we've come into this sacred space to worship and to honor the God who is with us. And in that story, may others find appealing to themselves the story of their own lives and how God touches each and every one of us. May the Holy One be with us as we worship this day and throughout this coming week that the story of our lives may be the story of Jesus. Blessings upon us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It really is a joy to be with you again this morning as we worship and as we welcome one another. Uh, last weekend, uh, the board of directors were on board retreat uh, in Palm Springs. Believe me, um, it was a lot of work, even though it was a great place to be. Um, and it was a joy to be able to share with them and with us as we continue to vision what this church continues to become by the grace of our God. I want to appreciate the staff who took care of business last week. Uh, I wonder if you would just share with me in a sense of appreciation. As I look around this morning, I see that each and every one of us has been here at least once before, so it is a joy to welcome one another in the name of God. Uh, you will receive in just a few moments a welcome tablet, and we invite you to uh, fill in those welcome cards. Please let us know that you've been present. Uh, but most importantly, please let us know how we may be able to minister effectively with you. If you're in need of pastoral care or if you would like a member of the church staff to call you, uh, please let us know by checking the box and we'll make sure that we follow up with you in the next day or so uh, so that we can be pastors to you. Of course, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, you do not need to leave this place without knowing that you're loved and cared for. Uh, please do speak with any one of us that serve on the dais this morning, and we'll be glad to spend just a few moments with you directly after worship this morning. As you came in, you would have received your orders of worship. Uh, you'll also know the announcements uh, for today. Uh, if you arrive early on a Sunday morning, uh, you will note that uh, the announcements are completely uh, on the overhead uh, screens, and so you're able to make note of them all uh, because not everything that we do at ch church is announced from the pulpit, so we have started that uh, facility for us uh, so that we have all of the announcements there for you. Of course, this morning, uh, hard enough to get here on time, right, with the, uh, with the clocks going forward, uh, lost an hour's sleep last evening. So we know as a church um, that on these particular days, um, if folks arrive just a little bit late and they're confused that we're doing communion instead of actually starting church, um, that we don't laugh at them or poke fun at them. Uh, we just acknowledge that they perhaps forgot to put their clocks forward um, and are wondering why on earth we are all up. The rapture did not come. They did not get left behind. Um, and so we just honor that this morning. God bless you. Uh, there are a few announcements for us this morning, so if you'd just like to bear with me, I'll just take you through those initial announcement, announcements. Uh, first of all, for the geeks amongst us, um, if you have a smartphone on you or if you have a phone that you can uh, check in on Facebook, uh, please do do that for us this morning. Take out your phone and check in on Facebook or any of the other social media sites that you are perhaps a member of. Uh, and then once you've done that, if you would then uh, put your phone to silent or to vibrate, uh, that would be much appreciated uh, so that we don't have too many interruptions uh, during the worship service. So please uh, do that for us now, and we'd much appreciate that. Azania, our people of African descent, will be meeting directly after the 11 o'clock service this morning at approximately 12.30. They'll be meeting in the Ryland Room, uh, which is directly behind us, uh, the sanctuary. So please uh, do show up and be a part of them uh, this morning. Uh, Bayan Ninhan, uh, our Filipino group, are meeting on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month now in the Hunter Room. Uh, Bayan Ninhan uh, means community, uh, and so they will be meeting on Tuesday in the Hunter Room, 6.30 for Filipino snacks, and then study begins at 7.15. If you'd like more information about that this morning, you can see Reverend Stedney, um, who is with us this morning at our 9 o'clock service. It's good to see you here this morning. Um, and she'll be delighted to give you more information about our ministry to uh, those uh, from our Filipino community. 
We continue to uh, collect toiletries for Tijuana and our hospice down there throughout the season of Lent. Uh, please do bring in your toiletries, uh, big or small, uh, to help those in need. Uh, whilst the board were away last weekend, we were encouraged to take the ones that we had in our hotel rooms and to put those into our little bags, uh, and we'll be bringing those in for Easter. You can see Reverend Alex or Reverend Pat for more information, but we are taking toiletries down to Tijuana um, at our hospice and uh, orphanage after Easter. Next Sunday um, is the LA Marathon, and the route runs very, very close to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Um, so we want you to be well prepared. Uh, please do go to the LA Marathon website and check out your route to get here to church next week. Um, I do understand that both Vermont and Hillhurst are affected. Um, so it really is important for you to go to the, to the map uh, and to check out your way to church. I, much as I would uh, say to you, you can uh, watch us online next week, um, I really do want you to be present. So I'm giving you lots and lots of notice uh, to go to the LA Marathon website and to check out your route to get to church next week. Uh, you may have to park in the parking lot next week, um, so please do check out all of that information. Um, if you do need some help, please do not hesitate to speak to one of us, and we will make sure that we get you here uh, for next Sunday morning, but please do let us know. Um, or you can be like uh, Elder Larry Rodriguez, who takes the red line and the orange line and every other colored line to get here on a Sunday morning. So uh, uh, please do check out. We want you to be here next Sunday. We also want you to be here on March the 23rd uh, for Making Michaela, a play chronicling the life of a trans woman. Uh, we have done a lot of work in our trans community um, here in Founders MCC, and this is a continuing piece of that work. Uh, we are asking for a $20 suggested donation, and all of that money goes to benefiting the Trans Realization Project. You can see Susie Horn, who's up in the uh, broadcast room this morning, for more information, or if you can't be here, uh, to make your donation to that Trans Realization Project. Uh, and this is to uh, a project that has been established to help those who are transitioning uh, with surgical expenses. So, so please be here uh, March the 23rd at 7.30 in the evening, and please do see Susie Horn for more information. Um, Easter is just a few weeks away now, and we are inviting you to help decorate the sanctuary for Easter with Easter lilies. Uh, you can get more information about that at the booth in the courtyard directly after worship, um, or you can call the office to order yours. Uh, lilies are often given in memory or in celebration of uh, those within our lives and within our community uh, that we wish to remember on Easter Sunday morning. So please do help us to decorate the sanctuary for Easter. A Holy Week of Transformation is taking place here throughout Holy Week, uh, beginning on Wednesday the 27th of, uh, of March at 7.30 for our prayer and meditation service. Uh, and then all the way through the week, there are opportunities for worship and opportunities to receive our healing. And this year, we're decorating or de deciding that we really want to focus this around healing for our community. Uh, and so on Wednesday, we'll be uh, reminding ourselves of the alabaster jar of healing oil and then finalizing that on Easter Saturday uh, with a special healing service in preparation for Easter Sunday morning for our resurrection. So we are delighted that we are actually capturing a theme for this year and preparing ourselves for the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. And of course, on Easter Sunday morning, we begin worship at 6 o'clock for our Easter Sunday, Sunday sunrise service. Uh, that'll be 6 o'clock in the morning, not 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and that will be at Griffith Park. Uh, there'll be more information about that coming out in the next week or so. But it, we usually gather at the Ferndale entrance just off Western. Um, and we gather at 6 a.m. for our Easter sunrise. 9 and 11 here for our celebration services. And then at 1.30 for our Celebración Español. So please do join us. And then directly after the, the 11 o'clock service for our kids uh, and for the kids amongst us will be our Easter egg hunt uh, for children 12 years and under. So you know whether you are 12 years or under this morning, um, but uh, you are more than welcome to help the kids find Easter eggs directly after the 11 o'clock service on Easter Sunday morning. What a great church we are and what a wonderful community we have together in this place. And so we affirm that with one another. Let's turn to one another now, offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, as we affirm that God is with us. God bless you this morning.
Scripture reading this morning, Luke 19, 37 through 44, from the New American Standard Bible. As soon as Jesus was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen shouting, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace. But now they have been hidden from your eyes. For the days will come when you upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you on every side and they will level you to the ground and your children within you and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation hear what the spirit says today thanks Thanks be to God God. Amen. amen Please be seated and, uh, as always, join with me in a moment of prayer this morning. Delighted and awesome and wonderful God, thank you for this time that we get to spend together. Thank you for your grace and for your wisdom. Thank you for your hope that is contained within each and every one of us. And thank you now as we have sung and as we have heard your scripture So we are now anticipating the revelation of that good news that stirs us and calls us to greater and higher things. So be with us, O God, this morning as we open our hearts and minds to the revelation of you with us, in us, through us, around us. And in that truth, God set us free so that we may be free to explore and to be your people in this world. And now, holy and gracious one, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray, amen. So over these last few weeks, we've been exploring our series in Lent, uh, the things that we have been invited to give up. This year, inviting us to give up more than chocolate, uh, to give up some ideas about some feelings and some thoughts that perhaps we have carried with us in our years as members of this community to be able to give up some things. And I said at the very beginning that the reason why we want to give up some of these things is that for many of us, we need to give up some things so that we have room in our lives to take on some new things, to take on some new attitudes, to take on some new perspectives, to take on some new things. And sometimes our lives are so full, I don't know about you, but sometimes our lives feel as if they are so full that in order for us to take on anything new, we need to give up something. So this year, we've been inviting ourselves to give up some all sorts of wonderful things and um, some very, very difficult things, some attitudes, some thoughts, some feelings that have perhaps been contained within our lives. Perhaps they've not been serving us very well. And those things that we have chosen to be giving up throughout this season of Lent. Last week, Reverend Dr. Pat shared with us about giving up superiority. I don't know about you, but that's a tough one. 
giving up our own superiority, our own feelings about who we are and about who other people are, or perhaps who they are not, and giving up those feelings of superiority uh, are some of those things that we perhaps need to work on in our own lives. And we've been sharing about giving up some of those things. This morning, we're talking about giving up our enemies. And if you thought the other three in the series were difficult, uh, this one seems even more difficult about how do we give up our enemies? How do we give up those emotions against those people that perhaps we have resentments against? How do we give up those things in order that we might be free in this liberation that we speak of as a Christian church? giving up our enemies. Jesus had the feelings of enemies, those who surrounded him. In our scripture reading this morning, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of Jerusalem are coming to Jesus because his disciples are screaming out, Hosanna is the one who comes in the name of our God. And I realize that that's our Palm Sunday reading, and we'll get to that uh, later on in our series. But the reality is that Jesus knew what it was like to be surrounded by enemies or by those who resented who he was, resented those who were exploiting or perhaps allowing Jesus to be called King of Kings, Messiah, the one who came in the name of God. And Jesus, over and over again, if you read the scriptures, reminds us about how he had to rebuke his disciples when sometimes they felt that they were perhaps over and above other people. How his disciples had to remember their place. And sometimes the disciples wanted to say to Jesus, but you have all these enemies that are surrounding you. Why don't you just let us go and, and get rid of them for you? And Jesus had to say, that's not the way of peace. That's not the way that we do things. That's not the way that those of us who are compelled to a life of following Jesus are compelled to be. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes this giving up of our enemies, giving up of the resentments, giving up of the people that have surrounded us or perhaps have done things in their own life to make us feel less than we should is one of those most difficult things. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but um, if you, how many of us have used Facebook? Oh, good. There's a few of us here this morning. But I don't know about you, but there are times when I go to chat with someone on Facebook and I've realized that they've unfriended me. <laughs> it's a very sad revelation and moment in our lives. You know, in the early days of Facebook, uh, you used to get a little notification when someone unfriended you. But, but now you don't. You only discover when you go to find them on your list of friends and you suddenly realize that they're no longer on your friendship list. And you, uh, I don't know about you, but I get a little bit paranoid when someone unfriends me. Um, I, Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson, the moderator of our denomination, I went to chat with her on Facebook the other day and I found out that she had unfriended me. I wondered what on earth I had done wrong, um, and so I called her and I said, Nancy, I can't find you as a friend on Facebook anymore. And she said, oh, don't worry, don't panic. I've changed from, a, from my own personal page now to a, a, a corporate-like page. And so you can't speak to me under my friends list anymore because I don't have that page anymore. And I was highly relieved that, that I was not an enemy of the Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson. Uh, and I hope she's watching this morning because I love you. But it's just amazing to be able to, you know, those feelings that come over us. For many of us uh, in this period of our own life and our own history, we're about to go into a period where perhaps we're going to hear some things in the media again against LGBT people as Prop 8 runs itself back to the courts. And we know that already some of the rhetoric that's coming out there is from folks who we consider sisters and brothers those within the Christian church, those who perhaps have a different opinion than we do about LGBT and Q peoples. But sometimes, especially in our community, we have seen those who oppose our theologies or our own ideas as enemies amongst us, enemies who try to deny the rights of other people. And certainly for those of us who self-identify or those of us who stand in alliance with the LGBT and Q community, it's hard, it's hard for us to hear our own theology being used against us. Prop 8 is something that uh, we hope will uh, finally will be put to rest and we'll have marriage equality back here in California. And who knows, we may even have marriage equality across the whole country. 
Those of you who are watching Facebook yesterday know that the Queen of England, my Queen of England, my good friend, spoke out yesterday for marriage equality and for women's rights in the United Kingdom and across the country. And here in the United States, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton have written friend of the court uh, amicus briefs to ask the Supreme Court not just to rule against Proposition 8 here in California and affecting the other perhaps states in this Ninth Circuit, but also to remove DOMA from our Constitution and to bring around the Defense of Marriage Act. We are certainly in a period of history making and history changing. And I think that we're also in a, a period of growing up. I don't want to see our Christian sisters and brothers as enemies. I want to see our Christian brothers and sisters as kind of having a moment of aha, a revelation that God continues to reveal to us. And whether we are on this side of history or on the other side of history, together as sisters and brothers, we find our way through so that we can stay at the table one with the other and find ways in which we might mature. Think about a theology that perhaps you held for a long, long time, and it took you a while for someone who had an opposing or different theology to come alongside you gently and lovingly, not to see you as an enemy, but just to see you as a companion on the journey and who helped you to see things differently. I believe that's what we've been called to do as sisters and brothers, giving up our enemies, perhaps even giving up the notion that people are our enemies, but rather just that we are together on this journey with different attitudes and different opinions, and we must move together to find new ways. Those of you who have been around our church for a little while know that when Prop 8 first happened in this, in this state, that those who were from the Mormon tradition and from the Roman Catholic tradition, more specifically, and also the evangelical tradition, were painted as enemies of the LGBT community. And those of us who stood alongside as Christian men and women, it first felt really difficult for us to identify as Christian in that whole arena of the language that was happening around Proposition 8. On March the 19th, there'll be a launch of a video and of work of the Los Angeles City Council Human Rights Commission that has chronicled the last four years specifically with some leaders of both the Mormon and evangelical and of the Christian movement from the more progressive standpoint. And at that launch, there'll be this documentary, just 25 minutes of a four-year process of many of the leaders in this community who decided that we were not going to see each other as enemies, but we were going to see ourselves as people with different opinions and different theologies. And they have documented this last four years of a group of folks coming together to find ways through this dialogue and through this conversation. And through this video, they're hoping that other communities and other issues may find a way in which we can find peaceful resolution, knowing that we will find ourselves with big, huge differences of opinion, but that they should not be reasons for us to disconnect with one another, but find them as ways in which we can grow together through that process. I was one of those participants over this last four years and have sat around the table with Roman Catholics and with evangelicals and have sat around that table one with the other. And the beauty of this last four years has been that we have found so much more in common than we found that we had in disagreement. We have found that when we rub shoulders, shoulder with shoulder, that we hold very similar values, that we hold very similar theologies that we hold very similar interests in bringing this world to a much better place. And that we had to agree right at the very beginning of this dialogue that we must let go of our stereotypes, that we must let go of the idea that we are enemies, that we must let go of the language that we of all sides have used against the other, and to allow that language to dissolve itself so that we could find our mutual place at the table. 
And out of those four years, we have found that together, we are able to find ways and issues that we can work on together because those are issues that we are compassionate and passionate about. Homelessness, immigration, poverty, women's issues, finding ways together. And in that dialogue, what they have discovered about me is that I don't have a tail that grows out the back with two big horns that stand up front. And I found that they don't either. What I've discovered one with the other is that when you begin to build relationship with those that have naturally or we have identified as our enemies, is that we've discovered that we actually like one another. Last Christmas, four LGBT religious leaders were openly welcomed and invited to the annual Christmas light opening at the Mormon Temple here in Los Angeles. And I'm delighted that I was one of those four invited openly, not closeted, not come, but don't tell us who you are, but come openly to this table within the Mormon tradition. And just recently, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have reissued their own statements around homosexuality, which aren't yet quite where we might want them to be, but they are certainly more compassionate and understanding and loving than they have been in their history. I believe that is because we have been present at the table and have decided not to consider oneself as enemies, but as sojourners on this journey, not quite where we all might want to be ultimately, but journeying together to discover new things about ourselves. If we don't let go of the notion of enemies, it's hard to have that dialogue. It's hard to have that understanding. It's hard to stay at the table with one another. Jesus had to let go of the notion that the Pharisees were his enemies, but rather were people who perhaps had been misled through their tradition. Perhaps not quite yet there, but through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, through his being consistently who he is and remaining faithful to the values of his life, many were able to come to understand that he was Messiah, that he was the Son of God, that he was the Chosen One, that his teaching, his loving, his consistency, his compassion would enable people to find freedom and a new relationship with God. Sisters and brothers, as founders Metropolitan Community Church, we too have been invited to be in the following of Jesus and to find ways in which we too can embrace an openness, to embrace an inclusiveness, to embrace the ways of Jesus so that we can let go of our enemies and find ways in which together we can bring about this new realm of God. I invite us this morning to let go of our enemies. You know there's something that magical happens when you let go of your enemies? Is that there is a freedom that bursts within. And that freedom reminds us of that higher calling that we have been called to this morning. Giving up resentments, giving up superiority, giving up all of these things will help us to become the free people that God invites us to be. I certainly hope that in this journey of Lent and hopefully by the time we get to resurrection, by the time we've been anointed on Wednesday of Holy Week, and found ourselves washing each other's feet on Thursday, sharing together on Good Friday and on Holy Saturday with the anointing of oil and the release of that which we need to let go of, that we'll be well and truly prepared for Easter Sunday morning, when, as in our scripture reading said this morning, 
if we don't shout for joy, I believe the chairs in this church will have to do it for us. May we be ready for Easter and take seriously this season of Lent. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray together. God, we are so thankful that you continue to give us examples and role models that you in Jesus showed us that giving up our enemies is an important part of our spiritual growth and our spiritual awareness and our becoming like you. So help us this morning. It seems such a hard thing to do. But help us this morning to see some of the benefits that we might receive if we would let go, if we would give up our enemies and see ourselves as sojourners together, maybe with different opinions, perhaps not even yet being able to sit in the same room together, but finding ways in which we can move through those hurts and those pains and find our ways to that true hope of liberation. God, we pray that you would now touch these words, enable them to become real within us. And as they become real within us, may they manifest themselves through us so that the world might know that we are followers of Jesus. May God be honored. Amen.
My name is Dawn Robinson, and I have the privilege of being a board member and the vice moderator here at Founders MCCLA. The last time I was here and asking for the offering, I explained to y'all what Founders has meant to me and has done for me and the life changers each of you has been to me. I have two messages to share with you today. First, some of you know that I don't necessarily like depressing movies in plays. I'm more of a Wally, -E, Ratatouille, Kung Fu Panda kind of girl. Kung Fu Panda 2 is on this week, by the way. And it's one of my faves. In case you don't know the plot for Kung Fu Panda 2, the villain is told that a panda is going to prevent him from being the ruler of China. And so he goes to the panda village and he destroys it. But the panda's mama puts him in a vegetable cart before she gets away. And then the panda is taken away and raised by the stork. And the panda grows up not really knowing what he is or who he is, but he knows he has a greater destiny than where he is. My favorite part in Kung Fu Panda 2 is towards the end when the villain asks him, how did you find peace? I scarred you for life. All the bad things I did to you. How did you find peace? And the panda says, Scars heal or they fade or something. And you gotta let that stuff go. All that stuff that happened in the past, it doesn't matter anymore. What matters is what you choose now. Amen. And I thought to myself, look at where I am now. I mean, I was on my couch, but I'm in such a great place now. <laughs> the second half of my story of the difference that Founders MCC has made in my life is look at where I am now. And stay tuned, because that's another story for another day. Okay, and then second, every time I come to church, I get the best compliments. I can wear a thermal top and some jeans and no makeup, and somebody comes up to me and goes, oh my God, you look so beautiful today. And besides the hugs, it's really one of the main reasons why I come to church. <laughs> so, when I first started coming to church here, I was asked all the time, and, well, I was asked just last weekend, why do you come to church with us? Now, I don't understand that question, because I may be a straight woman, but I am you. We have all been broken, but in this space, we are healed, and we are healing and we are made whole, and we are powerful, and we are believers, and we are accepted, and we are loved, and y'all, we are connected. <laughs> we are the hands and the feet of Christ in the world today. Amen. You are me, and I am you, and they know out there that we are Christians by our love in here. Amen. I come to this church because I feel God's love here. And I see God in your faces. And as a reflection of you, I hope you see God in my face too. Thank God there's Kleenex here. <laughs> and y'all, we have lots of work to do for those inside and outside of these walls. We need each of our treasures, not only from the people sitting in these pews, but from those watching online to sustain and grow our outreach programs. The food pantry, the scholarships, the 12-step programs, the ministries within the church and on the web, the HIV awareness and support, transgender awareness and support, and just making sure that doors are open and our T-line is working so the internet is on to continue to provide this safe space. And we may need to start a special offering to get a lecture money for some Kleenex. <laughs> if you haven't filled out a pledge card this year, please do. If you would like to memorialize something that's happened to you, maybe you were married or you graduated or you celebrated an anniversary or you want to remember someone special, please sign up for Illumination. And today, please, please, Give as generously as you can. Thank you.
please extend your hand as we pray over our offering? Merciful, loving creator, your hand guides us, your grace sustains us, your love provides for us. We give you these gifts with gratitude and joy. We give you thanks for all that you have given us and all that we have the privilege to give. Use these gifts to bless those inside of these walls, outside of these walls, and in all of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above you heaven behold. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. This line in scripture paraphrased that we basically have to mend relationships before we come to the table. <clears throat> Very apropos for the message brought today. I'm going to invite us as we go to God in prayer that we keep that in our mind and in our heart so that if there is a relationship to mend, that you bring it to mind and, and turn it over to God as we go to God in prayer and preparation. Loving and holy God, we live in a world of hurt and a world of delight. We face each day with joy and yet confronted by such challenges. We can spin the globe and put our finger down and where it lands, we can see the Congo ravaged year after year by devastating divisions. We can go to the Middle East, whose tortured past has begotten a tortured present. On Haiti, ever rebuilding. On Tibet, ever yearning. In our own country, on Newtown and Aurora in the U.S., still mourning. On Yemen, where 200 children sentenced to death are still fearing. We pray for the intervention by Prime Minister David Cameron of the UK to help resolve this atrocity. Mm. Patient God, how often we boast that we are your hands and we are your feet. Yet often our hands are too idle and we drag our feet. You taught us that there is a time to speak and a time to keep quiet, and too often we mistake one time for the other. Mm. Urge us forward with voice and vote, with commitment and cooperation, and even with Jesus' formula of prayer and fasting. Turn our hearts away from despair or violence or apathy. Grant us the paralytic's charge to rise up and walk. Thank you for entrusting this world to us. And we humbly accept the responsibility and fully embrace the opportunity. We dare to believe that your kingdom can come and your will will be done on this, your earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. May the example shared with us in the message today about allowing ourselves permission to sit down with those who we perceive to be our enemies be one that you bless us with so that relationships may end, mend and so that healing will take place and continue. That not only our world is transformed, but our very lives. Yes. And so, friends, may we join together in song as we sing the prayer that Jesus gave to us. Our Creator.
way we've treated others, our alienation from God at times, our unwillingness to be faithful people. But we will not hide our sin or remain silent, but have the courage to confess these shortcomings to the one who surrounds us with steadfast love. Mm -hmm. So indeed, let us go to God and in our silence, may we speak to the God who continues to love us through it all. Amen. Now may we join our voices together as we share our prayer of confession. Celebrating God, before we come to our senses, we find you running towards us, sweeping us up into your arms. Tears of grace mingling with our cries of confession, a mighty river washing away our sinful waves to restore us to new life. In Jesus Christ, we find no limitations on your grace, no reservations about your love, but a feast that overflows with wonder, a place we can finally call home. My friend, God rolls away everything that stands in our way. Everything. Our past, our sin, our pain, our hesitation, our scars and reshapes us into new people living in this the new creation what wonderful grace for we are forgiven broken we are made whole if we are lost we are brought home when we are empty we are filled with the songs of gladness and we rejoice and give thanks to god who has graced us with unending mercy. Amen. 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 Abba, our God is with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts to the one who welcomes you home. We open them to our God, who runs to embrace us with grace. Sing glad songs to the one who provides this feast. We join in singing to God, who throws a party for us in this place. With all the prodigals as well as the pious, with all the saints as well as the sinners, with all the faithful, we sing to you. Holy, holy God, who reconciles us to yourself. All creation is glad and rejoices. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who finds the lost and guides them home. Hosanna in the highest. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples. Taking bread from the table, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them and said, This is my body given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. And likewise, following the supper, he took from the table a cup, some say the cup of Elijah the prophet. He blessed it and offered it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, and in so doing, remember me. Let us pray. On this day, parenting God, 
pour out your spirit on the gifts of this bread and the cup, the celebration of our new life with you. In this feast you provide, we find the healing we hunger for in the bread which is broken for us. At this table of peace and joy, in the deep richness of grace's cup, we receive new sight so we can see our sisters and brothers in a new way, not as enemies, not as strangers, but as siblings, as brothers and sisters, not as outsiders, but members of the family. And on the very day when, we all, when all time will end, we will gather with your family around your table, and our voices will be singing through all eternity glad songs to you. God, in this community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. So this table has been prepared for us. This is not my table. It's not the church's table. This is the table offered to us by God. Mm -hmm. So come to this feast. Come if your faith is blossoming and full, and come if it is as tiny as a mustard seed. Mm. Come if you've always shown up for this meal, and come if this is your very first time. Come if you've always journeyed with Christ, and come if you've stumbled along the way. Mm. But come, for our God awaits to serve us with joy, with affirmation, with hope, and with peace. For here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church and with all metropolitan community churches around the world, we serve and celebrate an open and inclusive table. Mm -hmm. That means that you do not need to be a member of this church or indeed of any other Christian organization in order to come and receive of communion this morning. Mm -hmm. All we do is invite you to come and allow the Holy Spirit to do everything else. You may come alone with loved ones, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, significant other or significant <coughs> others, but come knowing that this is your table. Mm -hmm. When you come forward, you'll receive a wafer which has been dipped in non-alcoholic grape juice, placed upon your tongue, and will offer you a personal prayer of blessing. If you wish to come just to receive of a blessing, then let us know. And if you wish to receive communion just between yourself and with God, there will be a station of, un of consecrated elements to my left, to your right, at the sword altar, that you'll be able to go and receive communion just between you and God mm -hmm. at any time during communion. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are worshipping with us on the internet this morning, mm -hmm. we invite you to take this time to find a piece of bread and some juice, and just to receive communion this morning as we are receiving in this sanctuary. Yes. Know that this service that we provide on the internet is something that we want you to know that you are a part of us as we are a part of you. So we'll call the ushers forward, the acolytes and the servers, please join us and let us follow the ushers and let's keep this feast. Amen.
True of words could not be spoken. Giving up control, giving up expectations, giving up superiority, and giving up enemies. A little bit more to the journey to come. So come back and let's give it all up in our service to become like Jesus. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship this morning.
And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 